Good morning. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. I'll tell you what. I, I wish that the these venues, Live Nation and things like that, would let us go in there to watch what you guys do. I have always been fascinated with the roadies you because you build where the performers come out to play. And and I've always loved that structure. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's all about, you know, and, and, and the book Loud goes into that in detail about, you know, what really happens behind the scenes as opposed to what people think happens behind the scenes. And um, it's a bit of both, but um, a lot of it is, you know, about the evolution and, and the equipment, you know, how, how we go ahead and make all this happen in a day and then get out of there and be somewhere else the next day and uh, the people that are involved and the artists that are involved. I mean, it's it's everyone playing their own part, you know? Well, and it's teamwork because, I mean, when we come out of these big concerts and stuff like that, it, you see those trucks lined up and inside my mind, I'm going, man, if one of those trucks gets it wrong, it screws up the whole entire process. Oh, exactly. You know, if, if one comes in in the wrong order, it's there's all hell to pay, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's down to every little element of, of the show that has everyone has to do their part and they have to do it right so it's it's a well-oiled machine it's a a completely well-oiled machine i'm glad you say that because i i perform on live stages every week and the thing is is that people always come up and say hey can i help you out and it's like no no really there's a science to everything that i'm doing it's got to be put away exactly the way that i need to Absolutely, because you got to get it out again the other end. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to be there, the most important thing. I mean, it, because if it's not there at the next performance, uh-oh, we're screwed. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So is it is there a battle plan? I mean, do you guys get together? I mean, everybody on the team and you go, okay, th- this is the actual layout. It has to be this way. It's got to be in this box, and, and especially with the cords. Oh, my God, the cords. <laughs> and don't wind them don't wind them the wrong way either mm. yeah there, there is but each department is responsible for their department and then that's overseen and and pulled together and and you know what's the best plan how do we get these people in first we need these six trucks over here we need those six trucks over there you've got everything from you know a site manager depending if it's an outdoor show or an indoor show um, some tours now have truck wranglers that just look after the 40 to 60 trucks that are coming in each day. You know, you've got a production manager, you've got a tour manager. So all of these people have their own, you know, their own jobs and they all oversee someone else's job. So there's no wild cards out there. There's no one who's not overseen by somebody else because it's too important. You know, it's too important and it's too big. So it's got to be that well-oiled machine, you know. So, but I'm sorry. Yes. I mean, you know, I was, I was, I was just going to say. I mean, that oiled machine. I mean, I mean, my God. I mean, but the thing about it is, is that oiled machine has to be a healthy machine as well. I mean, I, I'm, I'm always shocked that you guys are always healthy. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're probably not as healthy as we look sometimes. <laughs> it could, no, it's, it's incredibly straining and it can be exhausting. And and you know now people are a lot more aware and they watch their diet and they sleep better hours and, and tours are scheduled. So people do have time to sleep. You know, in the beginning, there was none of that taken into consideration. You know, there wasn't even catering. There wasn't, you know, God forbid, have a shower. And then you'd get in the car, you know, once you've loaded all the trucks, you get in the car and you'd drive yourself to the next show, No. you know? So, oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how I learned how to drive. It was, um, we were driving from one show to the other. I would always stay, I would sit in the co-pilot seat because I was kind of too nervous. I, I wouldn't show anyone, but the reason my logic for it was I'd stay awake to keep the driver awake. Mm-hmm. So I'd always be talking to them and opening windows and closing windows and doing whatever it took to keep them awake. And then this one night, this guy just said, I got to pull over. You've got to drive. I can't drive another second, you know, and he just, and I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time he's already got around to my side and pushed me over and he was asleep as soon as he said as soon as he sat down he was asleep and I'm sitting there going well I've been watching him do it for months I guess I could do this so I did I just drove wow. and <laughs> luckily it was an automatic <laughs> <laughs> so so I just drove but I stopped when I got to like the outskirts of Sydney I got pulled over because it was peak hour and I'm like no someone's got to drive <laughs> Speaking- I pretended I didn't. I pretended I didn't know the best way to get to the venue. It was like oh I was God. terrified. Oh my God! Oh my God! See, now those are the stories that I love to hear because that's like one time somebody said, "You want to talk with Elton John or the tour manager?" And I said, "I want to talk to the tour manager because I want to know the stories because what you guys do behind the scenes is just fascinating to me." 
Uh, was that Nikki Pitts? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'd have to go back into into, into my into my uh, production and stuff like that to find out. But but that name sounds really super familiar. But the stories and and I mean and what you guys have to do in order to build because I mean I'm sure you've been inside the arenas when it's empty and and out there on the ball fields and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah. your work of art comes to life and then we get that wow factor and you guys are like the second fiddle in the band we don't sit there and applaud you or give you a standing ovation when we should yeah yeah you, you know it's funny actually bands have started doing it more and more often thanking their crew like as part of their show which is kind of a nice thing you know it, it all started with that show you know the, um, the loadout show, song what yes. was that song the loadout jackson brown but of course well, yeah, but the problem with that is that song went forever, yeah. and he'd play it, and he'd play it last, and all we wanted to do was actually load out, and he's still singing. It's like, oh, for God's sake, can you stop the song? We want to go. So then it had, <laughs> it had to be a total benefit to you when these cities started putting uh, these these noise uh, uh, rules in, into place, where it's like this concert has to be over at eleven o'clock, no matter what, because a lot of these bands, especially Springsteen, will continue going. Well, yeah, but um, you know, it's more money, isn't it? They didn't want to pay the penalties. It wasn't our. It was no consideration to us whatsoever. But you know, we can we can say thank you for it. But it was, it, you know, it was definitely nothing to do with us. It wasn't. Oh gosh, you know, if we finish on time, they'll actually get to get some sleep tonight. No, that wasn't even part of the deal. It was like, well, we're going to fine you if you go over. Oh well, okay, we'll finish. You know, whereas we've gone. Please come off on time. Please come off on time. We've got an eight-hour drive. We're not going to make it on time. We're going to be late at the next place. There they are, hours later, still playing. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> did, did you guys have to play by any of the crazy rules? There, there have been some times where people say, okay, well, you're done performing. You have to be off this premise premises uh, by a certain time. And if we weren't, we were locked in. Did you ever have to do something like that? Um, I've never been locked in anywhere. I've always had multiple trucks that could have gone right through any door that would lock us in. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you've got to be careful who you say you're going to lock in because <laughs> oh, we... some of us will take it the wrong way. <laughs> oh, my God. We, we were we were at a, a performance in Uptown Charlotte, and literally the, the door that we needed to get out was locked, and I had to crawl through this little this space to go out and just get some help because we, we were locked in the bottom of the building. Oh my God! No, no, that's a weird. See, you don't do that to a road crew because they'll find a way to actually take the wall off or something. It's like, oh, you want to play that game? Oh, we can do that. That's going to be fun. <laughs> so when you're out on the road, are you like the musicians and you have to sit there and say, "Where are we at again?" I, I have no idea what town we're in. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, here's an example. I fell asleep in Schiphol Airport, which is in Amsterdam, and I actually woke up at London Heathrow in a black taxi. Oh it was like, what What happened? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how exhausted I was. It was the last show was in Amsterdam. I was we were all living in London. I was working for a British band at the time. And it was hilarious. I don't know how they got me from whatever position I ended up in and Schiphol Airport, because we got delayed. The flight got delayed for like three hours. And that's the last oh, thing I remember God. was hearing the flights delay. So they somehow they got me through customs in Amsterdam, through customs in the UK, into a cab, and I wake up going, where am I? <laughs> They're in London. Oh, okay, cool. Here's my address. Thank you. <laughs> so when, when you got the layout of a tour, because we're, we're just starting our fall tour right now. We won't come off the road until the end of, of December. I mean, it's one of right. those where you look at the first performance, you go, oh, my God, we've got three months of this. Did you ever find yourself in a position like that, too, where you had to mentally really get involved with, with where you were going to be going over the next three months? You no, know, we we usually don't look at it. You know, you you probably look. I mean, what I do is I look at the first date and the last date, mm -hmm. and you look at what's in the middle along the way. You know, unless you're on an Ozzy Osbourne tour and they refuse to give you an itinerary. Oh no! Because because you haven't got any days off, and they know if you see you haven't got any days off, you'll all quit. <laughs> 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 so there's certain to you know there's there's good and bad things with having an itinerary. <laughs> Now, one of the things that you cover inside this book, and I'm so proud of you for doing this, is that you cover the idea uh, of the, the hashtag Me Too moment was 40 years away from where you stood. I'm so sorry that you had to go through any of that uh, through your career. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's. I mean, people say this and it's not a cop out, but it was a totally, completely different thing. And you didn't understand. I mean, I gave as good as I could get. 
you know, I mean, I, I gave as good as I got, you know, if someone would come at me, I mean, there's different ways to handle situations, you know, my first go to would be to make a joke, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm quite, I can, I've got a quite a quick wit and I can be like, my one liners are quite zingy. So, you know, I just say something, you know, like that. And if that didn't stop them, you know, if they weren't smart enough to realize there, then it was fair game. You know, so, mm, mm, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I just gave as good as I got. I had people cut looking after my back. So, good. you know, in all said and done, you know, I've survived. Well, I, I can't imagine what you went through in the way that, I mean, I mean, so, so many times, and, and it's happened in the radio industry, uh, they, they assume that you're the groupie. And I, I would look at them and say, I built oh. that damn stage over there. I built that <laughs> stage. I've, you know, I've had that so many times trying to get backstage or something, you know, and it's like, I mean, a typical example I was with ACDC and it's like, I'm going to, heading to the stage and the guy's like, oh, no, 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 little girl, you can't come in here. <laughs> and me, me, I was still quite new at the time, quite green. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm with the band. And they're like, well, you best go find them then. You go play with the band yeah. and, you know, we're, we're doing... <laughs> You know, we're doing men's stuff over here, you know. And it took a guy who, like, one, one of the people who I knew yelled down from the stage, no, mate, let her in. She's with us. No, it didn't matter what I said. He wasn't going to listen. He was having none of it. But the minute one person said, no, she's cool, let her in, he was like, oh, okay, boom. And it's like, what am I here, chop liver? <laughs> <laughs> well, do roadies have spinal tap moments as well, where it's like you know everything seems to be going great, and all of a sudden it's like, uh-oh, what the hell just happened there? <laughs> where, where do you think it came from? Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually a documentary. They just changed the names. <laughs> So true. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, Richie Blackmore's rainbow when he first, the first rainbow they built didn't fit into any of the venues. It was hilarious. We'd find out I was doing White Snake at the time and we were leapfrogging each other. So we'd always, we'd always mess with the rainbow because they'd leave bits of it behind. So we'd always do stuff to it. Oh my God. <laughs> and then they'd come back and get really upset when they found the pieces that were missing. <laughs> I, I've been with Richie and his wife. Those two people are some of the most spiritual, loving people on the planet. And, 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 the and what I love is that they love to share stories. Did you ever get locked in in those moments where it's like, look, I, I know you're the rock star and you're sharing the story, but I got a job to do. Uh, yeah, some of them are talkers. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And it's like, you're kind of trying to nudge them along. So they're kind of following yeah. where you've got to be. Because <laughs> you don't want to be rude, you know, and it's like, but, but, but then there's others where you actually go out of your way to sort of find them because they tell such great stories, you know, so it works both ways. You know? Well, how did you repair the broken body? Because I mean, when I set up the, the next three days, I'm in so much pain. I mean, how, how did you get yourself uh, you know, in shape and, and, and repair things? Uh, you know, I'm a swimmer, oh. so I've always swum, you know, so it's, I, I think that's helped. I mean, I never tried anything to to keep myself fit. I'd, I'd survive on things called barocas, which are an Australian fizzy vitamin thing that, that was only known to Australia for decades and decades and decades. Now the rest of the world's caught on and copied it, not as efficiently, but um, they were like a mega vitamin B boost. Mm. So I'd, I'd live on barocas and, you know, go swimming on days off and, you know, stuff like that. But I never looked after my health. So it's, I'm quite lucky, quite amazed I'm still here, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you imagine? It, it must, must be the genes. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if your world, when you first got into it, it, it already had monster drinks or Red Bulls and stuff like that? My God, I would have been down in those monkeys before setting up that stage. <laughs> yeah you know lucky i'm not a soda girl you know I've, been, I've never really gotten to sodas or anything like that but barocas were my thing and they're kind of fizzy so that's as near as i got but uh yeah it's uh we had other things <laughs> how did you get past the the dreary uh dread of of setting up a stage because i mean because you know you don't get to be the person underneath the lights but you're the one that's putting up the lights well that's what it's all about isn't it i mean we're doing it for them yeah. You know, it's, that's the whole reason why we're there. You know, it's, it's, we're not there for ourselves. We're not there for our egos. You know, we're there for them. You know, we're there to make them look good. We're there for when the audience comes in to go, oh my God, look at that. This is going to be amazing. And then when the lights go out and everyone goes, oh, that's it. That's what's, that's it. That's, that's the money shot the right there. You know, so that, that's the one that gives you the energy to pull it all apart at the end of the night and stick it back in the truck and go somewhere else, you well, know? And, and, so and it's, 
And when you're pulling it apart, that to me is, I mean, they, they actually ask me to leave the, the arenas and stuff like that. But I love the way that how everything fits into its own case. And, and because I want to see how things are built. Yeah. Oh, it's really important. It's, it's, it's a really, it's, you know, I mean, I, I say it's like a ballet, you know, a very messy ballet, but a ballet, you know, and it really is because everything's choreographed, you know, it's everything happens in a timely manner everything's moved like as one lot's swinging off to the left someone else is coming in from the right so you know everything's completely and if it's not it's going to take hours longer hours longer so you all work together and and you make it happen so like today i i noticed that all the roadies have earphone or earpieces and stuff like that was it always that way i mean because how did you communicate in the early days Oh, we'd have headsets, oh, you know, yeah, those yeah. clumpy, okay. but clumpy, clumpy Bayer headsets with the microphone, little microphone arm on and a little belt pack, and we would tether to a cable, you know. So, you know, or either that or we'd yell, oi, <laughs> 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 throw something at someone across the stage. You know, if they're not paying attention, you pick up something and throw something at them. So you're really throwing missiles between moving band members to hit someone on the other side of the stage. <laughs> and the, the audience doesn't even notice. They're kind of like, what was that? Never mind. Oh, what's going on? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did that change when, when it comes to the audience in the way that all of a sudden every concert now had to had to have the big screens now? Everything behind them as well as on the sides and stuff because all of a sudden the roadie's job became, I got to bring that damn thing in? Well, it's a different set of roadies that do it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, so what it is is a whole other department was added. So, and that's what we were talking about originally um, at the beginning. You know, there's each department has their own system. Each department works closely with the next department, you know, that, that affects them. You know what I mean? So whether it's video and lighting or video and audio or audio and backline, you know, these, these departments, it's all synchronized. Yeah, yeah. The name of the book is Load. One of the mantras inside this Loud. book, which I, which I really love it, is, is that, is that it, um, what, what goes on tour stays on tour. Yet when you, when you bring out the book, I mean, it's like, okay, what goes on tour stays on tour, but you let us inside. You, this is more than a backstage pass. This is you sitting down with us, sharing a cup of tea, and we're having a conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. The book's called Loud. 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 I, I, my handwriting. I'm, I'm a doctor. I want you to know that. You should see my handwriting. So yeah. <laughs> and and I, I got hooked on it because we were talking about Jackson Brown Load, and it's like, it's like oh my oh, really? God, the- come on, Clarence, get your game together. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. All right. <laughs> so, so now, what, when, when you release it like this, what goes on tour stays on tour, but yet you, you have shown us the map, and it's like what's, what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. You've let us inside. Well, yeah, but the thing is, it's not a tell-all book, you know, and that was never my intention. You know, I mean, all these artists and performers, they can, they've they all written their own biographies and they've all told their own stories. They've all confessed to all the, the, the bad or, or outrageous things that they've done. That's not my job. My job is actually showing people um, a different side of them, yeah. you know, a more personal side of them, how, how they interact with us as their crew you know, which is a unique relationship. So, you know, you get to see that and you get to see, you know, how we react and interact amongst ourselves, you know, because that's what keeps this whole machine going is is the different individuals, the different characters and the way that we all do our jobs and, and the way that we all treat each other. Building that so, team, you can't just go to LinkedIn and sign up to do the job. I mean, you guys have got to have some sort of uh, connection and, and this guy knows this guy who knows this girl who knows this guy. I'm now on your team. It is, it is. It's personal networking is huge, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I'll say it, you know, a hundred times that, you know, someone who may be excellent at their job but has no personality or, you know, is a disgruntled person mm. will be passed over by someone who's good at their job or learning at their job, but it's just fabulous to be around. And you know you can rely on this person. You know they're going to be a, a team player. And it's all about that. You've got to be part of the team, you know. And, oh. and you can learn as you go, you know, as long as you're prepared to listen, everyone will teach you. Mm, my favorite word, listen. I love that. So the question is, do you turn this into a podcast to extend it, to put conversations in there with all the other people that you've traveled with? Do you make a, net, a Netflix series or do you turn this thing into a movie? Well, it's, there's already talk about a documentary mm. and, um, you know, I mean, I'd like to eventually see some sort of feature, but, um, you know, some sort of dramatic, I don't know, 
interpretation of it, you know, so that would be good, you know. I mean, you know, that, that it, the nearest to it that's happened so far in my eyes is almost famous, you know, and that was, yep. that's, that's, that's the best and closest rendition of what it's really like to tour outside of a, you know, the, the star's perspective, you know, and, and this is another, another story which is separate and unique to itself. But, um, you know, it would make just as good a story. Yeah, it's, it's like the new Elvis movie. We got to see Elvis as a human being. And, and, and I walked away from that movie going, oh, my God, I never even thought that he had real feelings. Right. Just, <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, so. Oh, you, you, you're going to, because, I mean, when, when, the, when the stage lights go out and he's standing there and he's exhausted, you're going, oh, my God, I feel like I stole from that man. Yeah, you do. That's, I mean, they do. They give a piece of their soul every night, and my hat goes off to them. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to come back to this show many more times in the future. I mean, if, if, if uh, Joe Elliott from Def Leppard can be on this show nine times, so can you. I want you to always know that you've got a stage. And I'll Absolutely. build it. I'll build the stage, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, you, in, you invite me back, and I'll be there. Excellent. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too.